Hi everybody and welcome back. Uh, I'm doing this podcast today, uh, the day after the Browns uh, pretty much annihilated my Bears 25-0. to zero. Uh, I missed uh, the third preseason game, uh, didn't get a chance to do the podcast, but I'm back and better than ever. So sit back, enjoy the show, and uh, welcome back. Okay, one of the, some of the things that I want to talk about well, some of the things that I want to talk about is Coach Fox and the stupid blunder that he made at the end, bringing in Trubisky. Um, I think they should have at least uh, dressed Sanchez, but I'll, I'll, I'll touch up upon that. Uh, number two, Mitch Trubisky's performance. Number three, wide receivers. Uh, four, uh, our defense. And five, the predictions for the seasons, which they kind of change after the preseason, after all the information that we gathered once we saw our team. Okay, well, with that in mind, let's get started. Let's start with John Fox. With nothing to gain at the end, with Connor out and Mitch having to come back in, why throw the ball? Why expose him to that sort of risk at that time of the game when there's nothing really? Well, anytime you go out there, it's a risk. I mean, truth be told, you know, I think uh, uh, so a journalist refer to um, some point we won't be able to practice anymore. But uh, football's a rough game, no doubt. Um, you never want to see people get hurt. Uh, but it is part of the game. And so um, I don't know that we exposed Mitch a whole lot, uh, but I can also say anytime you trot between those lines, you're exposed. I was really disappointed. I was uh, um, looking forward to seeing Mitch Trubisky display some of the talents that he's displayed throughout the whole preseason. And I thought, well, you know, initially, what best way to kind of see what he has and they kept talking about well he needs reps and you know this and that and I was like well they're going to unleash Mitch Trubisky and show us what he's got nine straight um, handoffs to start the game and that just kind of set the tone for the rest of uh, the evening Uh, they pulled him uh, pretty quickly and then Connor Shaw took over Uh, when Mitch Trubisky was there he wasn't he wasn't very accurate and I I felt like he had too much pressure and Dell Loggins didn't really give him something interesting to work with, which, you know, it really doesn't make any sense, and it kind of it pissed me off, to tell you the truth, because, like I said, I was really looking forward to seeing Mitch Trubisky uh, with, you know, just unleash him and let's see what, what, what he can do. And, you know, a lot of these guys aren't going to make the roster, but they can at least uh, showcase some of their talent for other teams to pick them up. And it's not only... Um, it's not only not fair for those guys, which which they're trying to be professionals, they're actually trying to make a team or a practice squad. Uh, it's also unfair for the development of this young man. And when the season started, I was like, well, John Fox has never really developed a quarterback. He's always kind of worked with somebody that's been there. I, and this kind of you know pushed me to the edge where I just I don't think he's going to be the coach that's going to. Uh, be the one pushing Mitch Trubisky. Uh, now, Dell Loggins, also very disappointed in him. Uh, he's the one that basically designs the plays. So I thought right off the bat, you have to set the tone. And, you know, handing off to Joshua Rounds, and, you know, after a while, the Browns, you know, pretty much figured it out. They knew where it was going, so uh, it led to three straight punts. And then when Mitch Trubisky finally got a chance to throw a pass, it was, you know, by that point, uh, me, I was checked out, so... I kind of turned off the game as soon as Connor Shaw came out, although I really wanted to see what he could do, and, and he did show something, but it was it was the most, I got to say, it's and it is, usually preseason is the most boring, last game is the most boring game of them all, so. Anyway, and then that last uh, decision to finally try to score with uh, a minute left and expose your quarterback, now he took a hit, and a lot of people are overreacting with the way that he came down, but I mean, he did have two bodies on him. I don't think they came at him super um, wanting to hurt him, uh, but you know, you do expose yourself to injury, and you have to protect your number two pick. If I was Ryan Pace, I would have been throwing, if I wherever I was, I would have been throwing my notebook, my pen, whatever, at the screen because, like, what are you doing? Are you stupid? And sorry to say that, but come on, John Fox, and then his reaction to the media about people get out there and they get hurt you know nobody like this is you this is your franchise like you might not care because you're just collecting a paycheck but we care this is the guy that that 
possibly could be the best quarterback we've seen in a long time. Now, granted, he's a rookie, so that's an overreaction. He still has to prove it game in, game out, and, you know, once he takes over. Um, I really do think, though, that Mitch Trubisky will be taking over around game eight or nine. I don't, I don't see Glennon having a great career here. Um, not because he's not a great quarterback, but uh, he just doesn't have the, the weapons to basically guide him through it. Um, Mitch Trubisky, like, uh, I thought he handled himself really well. Uh, he's, he seems very comfortable with the media, and that's something that you really like about him, and you never really saw in the other quarterback that we had, Jay Cutler. So um, he's uh, always smiling, uh, answers the questions the way they're supposed to be answered, and, you know, you're pretty much satisfied with, uh, with, with having a conversation with him after the game's finished. I uh, just kind of feel bad for the fans because we want to put on the show, but we really didn't get to do that. Um, I'm never worried about injury. You go out there, you're playing football. Um, and if the, when you start to worry about those things, I think that's when the more it's more when they happen, uh, playing timid or keeping it in the back of your mind. But, no, I'll do whatever this team asks me. And it was kind of fun to be in there at the end, a little exciting. Uh, got the adrenaline back going, and uh, too bad we couldn't score. He had an excellent preseason. I thought he could have challenged for the starting job. I kind of wish he would have, but I understand the redshirting year, and, and, and I, I expect really good things out of Mitch Trubisky. So let's move on to wide receivers. Um, this is a position that really worries me. I mean, uh, our top wide receiver in the preseason was Deontay Thompson. And Deontay Thompson had uh, what I believe, um, let, me, let me see it here. So Deontay Thompson had eight receptions for 95 yards, uh, along with 24 and zero TDs. He did look good on, on punt returns. Adam Shaheen uh, is the next one up with uh, six receptions, 37 yards. Um, uh, for all the talk of Adam Shaheen and... and um, how great he looked on his video and on his highlights. I wasn't terribly impressed with Adam Shaheen. Um, he was on the field a lot, though, uh, but, you know, I don't think he had, uh, except for a few blocks, which I guess was a question mark when he came in, um, and maybe he's gotten better at that, but he did have a, a block, I believe, last game that, not this one, but the one previous, um, that, Helped for a score, if I'm not mistaken. Followed by Kendall Wright. Uh, now he had six receptions, 58 yards. So the good thing about this is that they're spreading the ball everywhere. Uh, we did lose Cam Meredith, which which really was a huge blow. And you know you kind of feel for the guy because he worked his butt off to become one of the top receivers that we've had. And and it was unfortunate to see him go down the way that he went down, especially you know us having no weapons. So. Really disappointed in preseason because of that, and I think that kind of pushed us back a little bit. And we need offense to score in these games uh, to to win these games. So we need to score offense to win some of these games. And if we don't have the right receivers out there, well, we're not gonna we're not gonna go. And then after that, I mean, uh, I don't I don't think Victor Cruz is gonna make this team. Actually, a lot of people have been saying it. I, I believe it. I don't think he's gonna make this team, and I believe he kind of was hurt. Um, and after that, I mean, I honestly don't expect many things out of Kevin White. Uh, he doesn't. He didn't look sharp. He didn't look like a go-to receiver. Um, hopefully that changes during the season. But uh, I, I, I think we have a bust in our hands. I don't think we, we – I think that's Ryan Pace's worst pick so far. So um, moving on from wide receiver, which is really disappointing, and that's kind of the, the weakest part of our team. We'll go on to the defense. Our defense, I was throughout the whole preseason, I thought looked pretty good. We matched up, but we had our ones. We matched up pretty good with the with the good teams, with the Titans. That was a, a team that we wanted to, you know, that's a team that that's pretty. That's a good team. That's a playoff team. Um, I thought we matched up really well. I thought we disrupted Mariota last game and. And that is, is, is good. Uh, I was really disappointed with Jay Howard. Um, I don't think he showed me much. I was uh, also hearing the, the, the Bears Brothers, which is a podcast that I, I really enjoy. Uh, and they, they kind of touched a little bit upon it and, and, and Jay Howard, how he's undisciplined. And he, he re they didn't really show up this preseason. I wasn't very, I wasn't impressed with Jay Howard. Um, I thought that if he can become what he became when he had that good breakout season before he got hurt, 
uh, I, I think he would have been a good weapon. Uh, I, I don't think he showed us enough. Um, he also got tossed from that game. And, and, and another one that, that, that really bothers me, was, although he's great, is nose tackle Eddie Goldman. Um, he also had, I think, the previous game before the Titans, if I'm not mistaken, he also had like this, he blew up with somebody and he, he got into a fight and and he got a penalty. So I think uh, the defense, Vic Fangio's defense, has to be more disciplined. Um, but overall, I think, uh, you know, I like Nick Kukowski. I don't know how you say Nick Kukowski. Yeah, sorry if I'm totally butchering that name. I have to look at it again. Um, but I, I love the, uh, that blitz that he had, and, and he sacked um, the quarterback, the Cleveland Browns quarterback. Uh, that, that looked pretty good, and I thought Fangio was just like kind of going out and blitzing, 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 which was good, but I would have liked to, for him to use some of the players kind of the way. I think... I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm of the mindset that you get a fourth preseason game to to practice, and I think even if you're third, fourth stringers, you try to, I would think that you, it's not a throwaway game. I think that you would try to div- like use it to your advantage to, to see what you have, and, and I thought that, that we, the whole Bears uh, team kind of checked out, and, and, and they didn't really perform. They, they, they didn't want to perform, at least in this game. I think last year they performed much better than this year, and you see how that season turned out, 3-13. and 13. Um, Now this goes to the end, my predictions. Uh, overall, after seeing this team, I think we're, what, we ended preseason 2-2, two and two, uh, and I think that's going to be a, a mirror of kind of how we're going to end up, 8-8. Eight and eight. We're going to have a lot of close games uh, like we did last year, and um, I think we're going to have a competitive team if we cannot score, though, that's going to cost us uh, during the season. And, and of course, some of that depth in the defense, um, we're going to need to pick up uh, another linebacker, another um, rusher uh, to basically help us out. I think Lamar Houston um, went out uh, with another injury. So uh, I'll be checking out for updates, see what, what, what happened. But um, overall, I think we have a great defense, the ability to be a top 10 defense, if not better. Um, and, uh, you know, we have the run game, we have Tariq Cohen, and we have, um, uh, we have Jordan Howard, which is a stud, and he didn't play much this preseason. Uh, I, I don't see why. I think you need to play, but, you know, after watching uh, Cam Meredith get hurt, I think that you, you want to save him. He already knows what to do, uh, but I also need that you need to start developing some of those calluses uh, so that during the season uh, that's not the first time you're taking, you know, hit and you know how to take a hit, and I think your body needs to start, you know, memorizing, you know, absorbing hits, and, and it's a tough season, it's a grueling season, so, and uh, we we have quite a beginning with the Atlanta Falcons, and, and, and the way that they lost the Super Bowl, so I'm looking forward to our defense, uh, you know, helping us out and carrying us through the first couple games, and, you know, uh, hopefully when the final cuts come in, we can pick up a, a receiver, um, I would like Curse, which is, I think Seattle was trying to, Javon Curse, I forget what his name is, uh, from, from Seattle. Uh, I would like for us to pursue him. Uh, I don't know how interested we are in him, but uh, hopefully you know, we can explore that and try to bring in one more receiver. One kid that I forgot to mention, which I would really like to ascend from the depth chart, is, is Tanner Gentry. He just kind of has a knack for being around the ball, and, and I know he didn't have a lot, a ton of opportunities, but... Uh, you know, with the potential of, of, of what he's been doing in training camp and, 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 and that 45-yard bomb from, uh, you know, from Mitch Trubisky the game before this one. I think that he has the potential to be really good. So, okay, well, that does it for today. Uh, thank you so much for listening one more time. Sorry I missed last week. Um, was busy, you know, trying to come up with this podcast sometimes and doing other things. Uh, sometimes work kind of trumps everything so uh, nobody's paying me for this I'm kind of doing it just because I want to do it and I want to get better at it Um, and I love talking Bears football so uh, you guys have a great weekend Uh, looking forward to the start of the season and uh, hopefully we bring our A game to Atlanta and bear down